In this video, we'll take a tour of the dashboard where you can quickly and easily access your spotter's data, manage your account details, device settings, and data plan. Maybe you've deployed your spotter, maybe you haven't deployed your spotter yet, maybe you don't even have a spotter, you just want to see what this is all about. In any case, this video will give you a full sense of what you can do once you have spotters out there gathering data. The first stop on this tour will be the menu that is in the top right of the screen. First, we have the profile where you can update your profile details as needed, reset your password if you want to. Next is the API section where you can set up spotter data to work with other apps. Then we have register spotter. Enter your spotter ID and activation code and you can register all the spotters that you have. Under that is the shopping cart, which is empty right now, but we'll come back to it later. And next you have the link to support. Click on that and you can find more resources and get in touch with us. And then of course we have the logout option, which we're not gonna do because we got stuff to do. Right next to that menu, you'll see an area for notifications. Currently we have no notifications, but we'll get one before this video is done. Don't you worry. The next main section is the map. You'll see we have a satellite view of Google Maps. We're able to zoom in and out and move around as well. Here we're demonstrating clicking and dragging. So you hold the click to make the hand grab and then you can drag whatever direction you want. The arrow keys also work for this. Zooming in and out, you can use the plus and minus buttons there that you see on the screen, so click those. You can also use the plus and minus keys on your keyboard or even your trackpad or the scrolling wheel of a mouse. Now the next section we're going to look at is the devices section. Here you will see every spotter listed that you have registered. Right now with my account, we only have spot 0202 registered, but that'll be enough for us to look at all the features here. In the devices area, we can look at real-time data, historical data, and device settings for each of our registered spotters. So here we see the real-time data where you get information on significant wave height, uh, the direction, the period, and the spread of the waves. Direction 360 degrees or zero degrees is north. Period is the amount of time between waves. And the spread is how much variance in the direction you have for those waves. You'll see for this data there are mean values and peak values. So mean is like the average and peak is a sort of maximum. Also, we have wind data, which is a new addition for Spotter. You'll need the most recent version of firmware, which we'll get into a little bit later. So right now for this spotter, you'll see the wind is at eight knots, a direction at 262 degrees, which is blowing east. And we even have surface conditions. Here, they are described as glassy. Now the time is listed for the last time that data was transmitted from your spotter and we are able to go between the two different time zones, universal time versus your local time zone. And then you'll also see the coordinates for the last point where data was sent. So I wanna show what it looks like when new data comes in. It's gonna come in in just a moment and we're gonna get updated values for the hour that just happened and the data that was just gathered. And there we have it. We have some updated information Maybe not the fireworks you were looking for, but what's great is that we're collecting data here. So next we'll check out the historical data section for spot 0202. So when we open the historical data section, you'll see there's some data shown in these graphs. What's really cool is that when you scroll back and forth, you can see individual values for these data points. And also you'll notice that the map has zoomed in very tight so we can actually see the movement of our spotter over the course of these data points. And we're also able to change the date range. And when you do that, remember to hit apply and then the data will show up. There you go. 
You can change the view of the graphs to enlarge or then reduce the size of them. We also have the ability to download all this data in its raw form. So when you hit that download icon, you will automatically download a CSV file. So that's a look at historical data. A lot of fun to play around with. So let's close out our historical data view and take some time to look at device settings. First up is a brand new feature that's not fully enabled yet, but we're really excited about it. You can share your data and also get data from other people who are sharing theirs. And this will strengthen our community and also allow for more thorough and robust data. Next up in device settings is data service, where you can purchase data credits and you also set the mode for your spotter. Currently we have three modes, Wave Standard, Wave Spectrum, and Track. This will change over time as we add greater functionality. So your data use is going to depend on which mode you're in and which update rate you're using. So you'll see when I move into Track mode, it does take more data, and so it will use up your data credits faster. If you wanna buy more data credits, you can click on the Renew button, and then it will take you to the Renew Data Service. You would do this for each spotter. And now you'll see, since I added a month, it's over there in the cart. I'm not going to buy that right now, though. A spotter purchase comes with about a year of data. Moving on, underneath Data Service is Device Status. If you have a green check mark, you're good to go. If you have a red check mark, you'll also have a notification on what to do next to fix that. And the battery icon shows you the charge on your spotter. Once it gets to 25% or lower, it'll turn red. You may have an unexpected issue with charging, or it could just be related to uh, daylight, that time of year, or weather conditions. When we look at firmware, it'll show the version that you have. And there's also the most current version that's available. We recommend keeping firmware as current as you can to maximize the functionality of your spotters, as well as to, you know, patch any bugs and things like that. Uh, one note is you do have to have your spotter connected via USB to your computer to update the firmware. You also have the ability to edit the name of the spotter. I like this name. It's catchy. We're going to keep it. Next, we have three interesting notifications. First is the wave height notification. This allows you to choose a height in meters, at which point the dashboard will notify you. The wave height notification can be super helpful if you're looking for that rogue wave out there, or if you're just trying to find the right time to go surfing at your local break. The next notification is the time fence notification. There's no settings to set here. This will just let you know if your spotter has failed to transmit data. And after two hours, it will send a notification. So that's helpful to know if something has gone wrong with your spotter. The geofence notification is super helpful if you have a moored spotter. It'll let you know when the location indicates a drifting unmoored spotter. So the default radius is 300 meters. You can set the radius by typing it in. And there's also the ability to hover over the spotter. And then when you see those four arrows, you can click and drag the radius out. If you start to lose track of the spotter's location, you can hit recenter at any time and just start over. So I'm going to set this at 80 meters, and we'll see if we can notice if anything happens there. I wanted to give you an example of what a geofence notification looks like. So no need to panic here but you will see that we're about to go outside of that 80 meter radius. And you'll notice that some text has turned to red and up in the top right, we do have a notification. So let's check that out. I see here, spotter is outside the geofence. I'm not too stressed out about that because we did this on purpose. We'll clear that notification. So we'll turn that geofence back off and then we'll look and see where our spotter ended up. So now that I'm looking for our spotter, I see that it has disappeared. Someone had made off with it into the hills. 
Okay, so we've taken a tour of the main parts of the Spotter dashboard. There's always more you can learn. If you have questions, you can contact us at support at sofarocean.com. Also, you might have noticed that there are links along the way that can explain things better, things like the data plan or APIs. So the resources are gonna be there for you. That wraps up this video. Thanks a lot for checking it out.